This video is going to be a tutorial in what you're going to be uh, seeing in a lot of tractors as far as problems and this is going to be electrical testing and maintenance. Before you can determine what kind of problem you have you need to do some testing. If you ever post anything on any forum they're always going to say take your multimeter and do some testing. A multimeter is going to be able to test AC voltage, DC voltage, it can do resistance checks which is in ohms and this one will also check amperage and there's a diode testing function. Different meters are going to have different levels as far as their testing capabilities. This particular one is a fluke and I like this one. It's more of a professional level but you can get meters, you know, they're going to be maybe about twenty, thirty dollars. This is, you know, more expensive but, you know, that's what I have and I've used for many, many years. So that's where I would start with is get a multimeter. Another handy testing item is a basically this is a light you ground one side and then you go looking for battery so if you're checking electrical wiring and you want to know is there battery there this little tip will allow you to go inside of a connector and make a connection you don't have to even take it apart so this is something that uh, is very very basic but again it's very useful because ground one side and then if you're looking at a switch or something you can easily find out whether there's battery on a terminal you know exactly what you have there I always like to have some jumpers if I need to extend the lead from the trouble light or from meter you know basically I'm going to just connect these to a battery or ground and that'll make the connection Battery is red and ground is black. And that's one of the things, when you look at your battery, there are two terminals, positive and negative. So if you're ever looking and testing a battery, you know that the positive side is going to be red and the negative side will be black. Usually your cables that are connecting to it will also be color-coded. Something that I've had a lot of problems with are the terminals. A lot of problems with batteries are not the battery you find out it's just the post that's coming out the terminals have become corroded and need to be cleaned and that's something that uh, I've got these terminals here these are actually replacement terminals where you can cut the existing one off and install these. Something that you'll notice is one of them is larger than the other. Whenever you have a battery, the positive terminal is always the larger terminal, the negative terminal is always the smaller. When you go to buy uh, battery cables, you'll find out that now they say, oh well there's only one size and that's baloney because it makes a big difference when you try to tighten one of those clamps down on the positive it's too big when you try to do it on the negative it's too small and I end up breaking the uh, connectors so I have found these on Amazon one of the very few places that I found where they actually say that there's a difference between the positive and negative John Deere has these new ones they are like a band and I had some of those on a 2210 and I could not tighten them down tight enough the bands again they think are going to fit positive and negative and they don't work good for either one. When you're making connections if you want to add some wiring this is where you can get crimp on connectors. Crimp on connectors you can get them with spades, hooks, you know rings like this and they're pretty simple you just crimp them on and hope they're going to make a good connection. Okay, the crimping pliers have a notch in here and that's what's actually going to squeeze this together to make your electrical connection. These particular ones are also 
equipped with heat shrink so that you make a mechanical connection here to the wire but then you also have the plastic here which you take a heat shrink gun and this shrinks the tubing around the wire and makes it much better and it's going to be a waterproof connection so this is something that I have used and they're okay but there's nothing better than a solder connection I was an AT&T engineer for many years and I was an instructor and that's something I can tell you the best electrical connection will be a solder type connection so what I do is I take a solder connector make my connection and then I have heat shrink tubing which I slide over this so that there's no exposed metal and that way what you have is a waterproof connection with you know having that heat shrink around there and it's going to make a very very good electrical connection some people think that if you put a dielectric grease on connections that this is going to actually improve their conductivity their conductivity and that's absolutely wrong dielectric is the absolute opposite dielectric grease is the resistance to electricity flow so if you put this on a connector what it's actually going to do is seal it out but it's not going to improve connectivity it's going to re reduce it so I've seen sometimes where people have done this and when you go to take the connectors apart they're nothing but a big mess and whenever you take a connector apart you want to use some type of a contact cleaner you're going to see I, I use a lot of WD-40 products and I don't know if the products are that much better but I guarantee you this little flip up straw I love it I can not use a shotgun to spray a connector this gives me a little pinpoint blast and if you want to go in this position it'll be like a normal aerosol type can so I use this and I will clean a connection first and then yes I use WD-40 WD-40 is not a penetrating oil it's actually WD stands for water displacement 40 is the 40th formula they came up with WD-40 is a very light film of oil that will minimize corrosion that's something that anytime you have two different metals and you're joining them together it's just a matter of time and there will be corrosion so that's where I like to put a little WD-40 on the connections when you do that install them take them apart install them take them apart and that's going to clean the connection and make it a better connection with a little WD-40 on there you don't need heavy grease just a light film of WD-40 is going to make your electrical connections much better Okay, so you have a battery and the battery needs DC voltage to charge it on tractors there's something called a stator and th this is basically on uh, bigger John Deere tractors this is a series of coils of wire which you have magnets that go past them and that's going to induce a AC voltage into the field and that in turn can't charge a battery so what you have to have is a device and this is called a voltage regulator voltage regulator converts the AC which is normally in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 volts converts it to Z DC voltage and it's going to be in the neighborhood of around 13 to 14 volts your standard battery is going to have six cells and they each are going to produce a little over two volts so you're looking at the battery is about 12 volts voltage regulators are going to apply a voltage of maybe between 13 and 14 volts the higher voltage will actually be what's charging the battery so you need a higher voltage and that will charge the battery if you have an alternator some tractors actually have a true alternator an alternator is where they've combined these two functions into the same device and that's what's in your car 
It's called an alternator because it's alternating AC voltage. The output is DC, and basically that's what you're going to have in most garden tractors. The batteries are going to be on a lot of tractor tractors are going to have two flat terminals. These are on smaller tractors, and again they're positive and negative. You never want to connect the polarities in reverse. If you do that and you have an alternator, you can actually blow the diodes in there or you can damage the equipment. So you always want to make sure this has a little positive arrow and this one has a negative on here. So that's going to tell you, you know, where you're going to connect. Red is positive when you use jumper cables. Black is negative. Okay, this battery has little caps on here, which if you open it up and you look inside, you'll see there's liquid in there. And basically this is um, acid and water. And what this is doing is actually going to be creating the voltage. When you have batteries and it's having a problem, something isn't right, first thing you always want to do is check, take these caps off and see that there's water in all of the cells. Six cells times two volts, that's 12 volts. If you see this particular battery I already looked has two dry cells. If you have a dry cell, there's a problem with the battery. That particular cell is being overcharged and what happens is it's not going to be producing as much voltage when you try to start something. So this is a bad cell. One bad cell, if you look at a battery and it says it's got 11 volts, it's got a bad cell. So you want to put in not tap water, you want to put in distilled water. So I went to Walmart and I bought me some, oh that's actually Kroger, I bought some distilled water. Distilled water takes all the minerals and other things out of it, but in this case they actually added, they said for taste, they added some minerals back into it. So that's not something you want. You want pure distilled water. Uh, you don't want to use regular tap water because the minerals in there is going to affect the battery. You know, it's not something that you want to um, use. You want to use pure distilled water, and that's the best thing to use in batteries. The terminals here, whenever you have a problem with a tractor, clean the terminals on here first. About half the time, I've ran into terminals just not being clean. You clean them, clean this terminal, clean the other one on the cable, and then make sure you got a good, nice, tight connection, and that will eliminate just a lot of your problems with the uh, batteries. Okay, batteries are going to be rated on cold cranking amps. This one is 350 cold cranking amps. That's at 32 degrees. The colder it is, the less current that the battery is going to be able to produce. So when you buy batteries, you want to make sure you're using the correct size battery. 350 is pretty standard in most lawn tractors or even a 250. My John Deere diesel tractors have 550 cold cranking amps. They need a lot more power to be able to start a engine when it's cold.